Welcome, and thank you for joining us here for another VU Crew Live. My name is Joshua, and hey, if this is your first time and you don't know what crews are, crews are simply the small groups of our church. And hey, uh, again, I'm just so happy that you're here. Right now, uh, it's, it's one of our off months, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we're not having crews right now, so this conversation is even more precious to me exactly. to do this. But we're kicking crews back off on May 10th. We're jumping into season... Two. Two. Yeah. yeah. And uh, hey, we want you to be there. Uh, it's very easy to join. You can go to voochurch.com slash cruise and find a crew for you. Hey, we've got men's crews. We've got women's crews. We've got co-ed crews. We've got fitness mm -hmm. crews. We've got mm -hmm. care crews. Spanish we got crews. Spanish crews. We've got yeah. high crews. Blue high yeah. crews. College crews. We've got college crews. Of, so God. the bottom line is there's a crew for you. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so welcome. You're about to experience what a crew is feels like yeah. and looks like. So um, I'm here with some amazing people. And here at VU, Aww. we've been going through the book of Mark. And it's been so exciting to go through the book by chapter by chapter, right. message yeah. by message. It's been awesome. Pastor DC brought some heat this past oh, yeah. weekend. A uh, message titled, I Need a Change. Ooh. Yeah. So, hey, we never start a crew without an icebreaker. So before Love we it. dive into the content... I'll, hey, let me get your name. Mm -hmm. And like, if you could be any animal, what animal <laughs> great question. would you be? I love that question. How's it going, everyone? My name is Sean. And the animal that I would choose is a dolphin. Oof. Uh, the reason why is because, I mean, they're just, they're, they're cool. They do flips. They do tricks <laughs> and all that. But they're also one of the smartest animals on this planet, oh, right. not yeah. just inside of the sea. Oh. Yeah, dolphins are super beautiful. Yeah, and it's like, oh, they're like Mr. Miami too, right? So they're like, they're Miami dolphins. Really like right yeah. over so I'm, I'm a Miami Dolphins fan as well. <laughs> yeah. That has a little bit to do with it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. What's up, you guys? My name is Grace, and if I could be any animal, I think I'd be a black jaguar. Mm. You're so mysterious. Yeah. I want to be uh, mysterious like that. Wow. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's very specific. Like, yeah. are they rare as well? Are they also rare? Yeah, they're pretty rare. Yeah, I don't really know. That's cool. I don't know. They're probably in danger. We don't know. Uh, um, <laughs> but uh, if I were to be an animal, I'd probably choose a kangaroo. Ooh. Um, just because I want to have like a pouch. And also, I'm not a big fan of leg day, so they have strong legs off, off yeah. the rip. Their so. tails are like massive. Yeah, you massive. can just kind of kick right? it back. Wait, yeah. wait, but tell us your name. Tell us your name. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My name's Danny. Danny yes. the kangaroo. <laughs> right. so, Danny, Danny, the kangaroo. Danny the kangaroo. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. That rolls. Hello, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Down under. Down under Danny the kangaroo. 100%. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> um, that's a really good accent. Uh, I don't know how to follow up that one. Uh, my name is Justin, and if I could be any animal, I put a lot of thought into this in the last 10 seconds. I would go with a peacock. Wow. Because fun fact about the peacock, you know, they're so beautiful when they're you gorgeous, see them. They're gorgeous, yeah. Actually, the really beautiful ones are the males. Is that the fact? That, that is the fact? fact. And the ones, I'm not going to say they're ugly. Right. I think all God's creatures are just really precious. Right. And beautiful. And beautiful. But I'd say less beautiful are the are the women. And I feel like in, in my life, the beautiful ones are the women and the yeah. ugly ones are the guys. So it's like a little flip, you know? Okay. So like guys get a huh. chance. They get a chance to, to actually they right. show yeah. their feathers. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. I don't know how to take that, but. Um... I would take it with um, Grace. Okay. <laughs> so good. <laughs> That's great. This is a great icebreaker. Yeah, it Thank is. you so much, Josh, for this icebreaker. Yeah. My yeah. name is Kat, and if I could be any animal in the world, I would be an ocelot. An ocelot. an ocelot. How do you spell is, that? What is what is it's it's kind of like a lion, isn't it? <laughs> kind of. It's a cat. It's in the cat yeah. family. It's, it is. It's an exotic cat. Sounds yeah, like I made it up in third grade. No, it's not made up. It's a real animal. It's <laughs> not real. And they live in the forest. Yeah. And they're like a smaller version of a large cat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, they're super smart. Yeah. They can jump and climb through trees. I just yeah. feel like they're so free. That's yeah. what right. I love about yeah. them is yeah. that they can do anything. Yeah. Yeah. They're super athletic, yeah. which I admire about them because I'm not and I wish I was. So... I would be an ocelot. I like that. I like yeah. that. So Kat would like to be a cat. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Cat. 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 But not a house cat. Yeah. No, oh. not, like, not like a tabby. Yeah. Wild cat. A yeah. wild not cat. Like a yeah. I like that. It's like an Aslan vibe. Like, yeah. I'm not tame, but I'm good. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Cat, okay. if we were animals, we'd be best friends. Yeah, you guys would yeah, be like yeah. cousins. Yeah. We'll you guys be would be cousins. Yes. Yes. Now we'll just be the prettiest one. Yeah. <laughs> they might eat you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd be lucky. <laughs> Probably die. I <laughs> am uh, Joshua, as I've said already. If I were an animal, yeah. I, I, this is a question I struggle with because mm. I have a top two. Yeah. Honestly, oh, I've got no. a top three. Oh, well. So <laughs> if I had to choose my top two, would either be a dragon or Pegasus. 
Neither of those. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Like they're not. Up the ice. Those aren't real animals. It has Come on. Real animals. Those are a- actual animals. Now, if you said Loch Ness monster, I'd be like, I'm with you. That's not real either. No, that one. <laughs> oh, there's those pictures. Two <laughs> those two. So if I'm not allowed to choose a dragon or a Pegasus, which are very real, they're mythical yeah. animals. Then I would have to go with a saber-toothed tiger. Okay. Huh. So okay. they're extinct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was not real. existing. It was real at one yeah, point. Yeah. So give three of us would be yeah. like in the feline family. So yeah. like we, yeah. I'm amongst company. Yeah. But extinct. But you're an, why you're an you ancestor. Want to be a saber-toothed tiger? I just like like the look, man. They're like pretty strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're pretty big back then as well. And like the teeth, five like their teeth are just they're so nice. I I appreciate a good set of teeth. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I've vibes. only seen that in Ice Age. I'm sure your good dentist vibe. is happy. Yeah, my that. dentist, yeah. well, you know. My dentist yeah. tolerates me. Which yeah. <laughs> anyway. Wow. I think it's time to jump right in. Bring, Bring it, it back. The Bring it back. Yes, this was a great icebreaker. I think all of us feel a little closer to one another now that we understand yeah. uh, we are. who we would be if we could be an animal. But I'm grateful right. that we get to have this conversation yeah. today. Mm-hmm. And we're going to jump right into really a discussion around the sermon from this past Sunday. Like Josh shared, Pastor Don Shree brought an incredible word titled, I Need a Change. And I know that I have so many awesome notes from this message. Um, I kind of consider myself a Bible nerd. And so anytime that there's a design pattern or something that comes up multiple times in the Bible that has significance and symbolism, I love looking at that and studying it further. And so at the very end of Pastor DC's message, she talked about how Jesus asked the same question twice in Mark chapter 10, first to his disciples or his closest followers, and then to this man named Bartimaeus who was blind. And the question was, what do you want me to do for you? And the first time that she asks this question, she's um, that Jesus asks this question to his disciples. He's actually asking them while they're having a conversation about who should be at the seat of honor, who should actually be elevated above others. They're not thinking about Jesus who just explained to them that he was about to prepare to give his life on their behalf and on behalf of the whole world. Instead, they're thinking about themselves. And yet Jesus so um, lovingly and in grace asks this question, what would you want me to do for you? And that just hit me so hard that no matter Mm -hmm. what our perspective may be, no matter what we may be thinking about, even when it's wrong, even when it's completely against what God has called us to do and the way that he's called us to think and act Mm -hmm. and love other people, he's still so faithful to model to us servant leadership and what it means to actually love us unconditionally, to serve and to ask, what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. Uh, That hit me so hard because so many times I'm like the disciples in the story where I'm not in the right mindset or perspective. Mm. Um, So anyone else here? I don't know if anyone else had something specific from the sermon like that that really hit them. Yeah, I got got something. I love what you're talking about there by perspective. And uh, kind of on that similar point, when when DC was talking about, are are we being honest with God, Mm. right? Because when Bartimaeus, he he didn't just see Jesus as a teacher. He he said rabbi, right? Yeah. Lord, master. And he was honest about what he really wanted. He could have asked for, hey, can you give me more money so I can, you know, yeah. live. Can can you do this or do that, yeah. right? Based yeah. off of what he's been ostracized. Hey, can you yeah. can you fix me some no, he knew what he wanted, which was healing. So that's yeah. why he was Great. honest with the Lord. So that really really jumped out to me. Great. Yeah, I love that. Something that jumped out to me was when Pastor DC said we're not an interruption to God. Mm. Yeah. Mm, and I think good. that speaks to yeah. every season of life. Um, mm-hmm. Wherever you are, God is always faithful to meet you yeah. exactly where you are. Mm-hmm. So we don't have to have shame in returning to God and running to God in any sort of circumstance. He's always faithful to meet us right where we are. He's happy to be with us. He yeah. He finds joy in I us coming that. to Him yeah. and running to Him with any situation that we're in in life. So mm-hmm. that was really beautiful to me. That's beautiful. I love that. I love that that's the God that we serve. That's the God that we get to have a relationship with, this God Mm -hmm. who actually wants to serve us. Like, when I think about that, it really blows my mind. Um, But I'm excited to jump right into it. Wherever you are, feel free to follow along with us, foodchurch.com slash crew. You'll see the discussion right there. And I'm just going to read here the main scripture. So this comes from Mark chapter 10. 32 through 38. It says, they were on their way up to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way and the disciples were astonished while those who followed were afraid. Mm. Again, he took the 12 aside and told them what was going to happen to him. We are going up to Jerusalem, he said, 
and the son of man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Mm. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. Mm. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Mm. That's so good. Uh, Those scriptures are amazing. And it takes us to the main idea here. And if you guys want to follow along, you go to vuchurch.com slash crew to follow along. And the main idea here starts off, hopefully you've never found yourself in this scenario, but chances are that you have. James and John placed themselves in the situation of asking to be seated beside Jesus' glory. They didn't realize at that moment, but they completely let their skewed ambitions take over and overstep their bounds. Yeah. Thankfully, Jesus was gracious and corrected them as he always is. I know he's always that for me. I know you yeah. guys can attest to it as well. And those of y'all watching as well, it's just that type of grace to me is inspirational um, yeah. and, yeah. and uh, Great. loving. But it says he continued his walk with his disciples, letting them see the example of their uh, true motivation should lie. Further down the road, they encountered Bartimaeus, whose response to Jesus was a sincere request for change, yeah. not a position of power. Mm. We ought to take this as a true indication of following the heart of God when we consistently seek change that makes us more like him. Offering up our motivations to him daily ensures that we're doing what he asks of us. It, it keeps us going along on our mission. And DC even meant, uh, said this quote, and it was great. Having uh, a wrong ambition can mm. ruin our mission. Wow. Mm. And I thought great. that was powerful. Right? So with our hearts laid bare before God, he brings us to a place of giving rather than gaining. In a stance of humble service, God takes delight in us and does more with our gifts, talents, and abilities yeah. than we can imagine. So get ready because there's a journey of change that is fulfilling and waiting for you. Our ambition, I have this quote before I get into it, it's, it's, I think it's really powerful and I've been sitting on this a lot. Our ambition has to die day after day mm. at the foot of the cross to be more like Jesus. Oof, yeah. wow. That's mm. so beautiful. I think a prayer that we can all pray, pray in our daily lives is transform me so that I can look more like Jesus with every mm -hmm. passing day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that just leads us right into our first point and it's not so with you. The disciples' lofty request makes it clear that they've missed the power of the moment of Jesus telling them what was to come. Instead of acknowledging his future sacrifice, they reacted like those who did not really know him. Jesus reminds them of their calling to walk in humility and to exhibit greatness through serving, not by seeking glory. Jesus said to them and tells us today, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Three points are, Whoever wants to become great must become a servant. Serving like Jesus is about giving, not something being taken away. Selfish ambition makes us blind and insensitive to the heart of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I love this quote that Pastor DC said. She says, as the world dangles ambition at us, we speak to our souls and say, not so with mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And that leads us right to our first question. And that is, what does selfish ambition look like in your life? Selfless ambition yeah. like in your life. It's such a good question, yeah. right? And it it seems almost like uh, oxymoron, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm to be selfless and yet also have a measure of ambition. Right. Right. It seems almost as if it is it it, it it contradicts with each other. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I, I have been in times in my life where like I have been ambitious mm -hmm. and it could be very like self-driven. Like I would like to see myself in these different places by these times. I got timelines and objectives. Yeah. Like, and I've learned over time that for me, I believe God works in a place of expectant contentment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where I, God, I am so okay with where you have me. Yeah. Because where you have me is such a beautiful place. Yeah. Uh, and yet I know that you are a God who longs to give good gifts. I know you are a God who has these wonderful and beautiful plans. And uh, there's so much greater, right? I, right now I see in part, you see in whole. So I know there's more than what I'm seeing right now. And I, I, I'm excited to get to those spaces, 
but I'm grateful for where I am now. Mm. Yeah. And I won't rush your timeline. I won't press. I know I'm, I'm, I, I look forward to it with expectant. I'm expectant for that, but I'm also very content here. So I think it's, it's okay to, to dream. I think it's okay to have vision and goals and desires, right? And the different spheres of your life, whether it's yeah. family, faith, fitness, friends, finances, right? I think it's okay to have goals and you should. I think though those are so, should always be subject to God. Yeah. God, I would love to make sure like my big account looks like this, yeah. by this by this time. I would love to have, look my life to look like this by this age. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it happens by that in that timeline, wonderful. Yeah. yeah. But if it doesn't, God, it's all good. Like yeah. Yeah. you got a perfect plan for me. And, right. and that's ultimately what I want. I want to be where you want me. I want to go where I'm sent. I don't want to be yeah. where I went. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Great. Yeah. So ultimately Great. that's what I think that's what it looks like for me. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I, I don't know what your Enneagram type is. I'm a but three. Me too. Okay. <laughs> me too. Right. Yes, yeah, I knew that. Thank God. Yeah, we're similar in that yeah, way. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Where uh, I'm a three on the Enneagram, which is basically just a personality test. And a three means that you're an achiever. So mm-hmm. for me, it, it really helped me to understand when I took this personality test, why I think the way that I think. I've always been very goal oriented, Mm. very goal driven, wanting to achieve things, wanting to crush things. And I realized that I found a sense of identity in that, that I actually Mm -hmm. found purpose in that, that if I didn't accomplish something, I felt like a failure. If I Mm. didn't achieve or crush a certain goal that I had set for myself, I was disappointed in Mm. myself. That's how I was living my life from the time I was young. And one of those ways was in school. I really took school seriously, especially going into college. Homework, you submitted that thing early. Oh yeah, yeah. I, that, I like, was not that reminded the teacher late. about the homework. Wow. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, no, I did crush my homework though. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real guys, I did homework. But for real, I actually liked school. I was one of those weird kids that yeah. liked being in school. I really liked learning. Right. Um, I didn't want other kids to know that too much because it wasn't cool to like school, yeah. but Inside, I was crushing my goals. I wanted to have good grades. I wanted to do well on a test. I wanted to feel accomplished in actually doing well in school. And so, especially in college, I found so much identity in that. And I wanted to keep going. I was like, I'm ready to go on to get my master's degree. I'm ready Mm, to get my doctorate degree. And I pursued those things. I actually um, applied and was accepted and was ready to start a master's program. And all of a sudden it fell through. And I remember thinking, that I was a failure. Like, Mm, how could I not realize that um, this financial component was going to affect my ability to do this master's program or not? And God really convicted me in that moment of exactly what we're talking about. What does it look like to have selfless ambition? My ambition was definitely not selfless in that moment. My ambition Mm -hmm. was because I had found worth in actually accomplishing school and mm-hmm. getting mm-hmm. degrees. And all of these were for my own glory. They yeah. were for my yeah. own pride. Yeah. They were yeah. for my own um, identity. And God was actually telling me, wait a second, I have so much more for you. That's and me. your identity, mm-hmm. who you are, you're, yeah. it's not found in your ambition. Oh, when right you right. actually choose to be ambitious about the things that I've called you to do, it looks different. Suddenly yeah. it's not yeah. about you getting a grade to feel better about yourself. Right. Suddenly it's mm-hmm. actually oh, okay, I'm going to do school. I'm going, or, or whatever it may be, I'm going to crush this goal because God's called me to do things with excellence because yeah. he's called me to do this and it's for his glory, right. not for my own. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so yeah. I'm not looking for approval in an inward sense or from other people around me. I'm actually just looking for God's approval. And mm-hmm. it taught me so much about what it looks like to continue to have goals, continue to do your best, but to do it now with a motive of really pleasing God, my father. And my goal in life is for him to tell me, good job, well done, good and faithful servant, that it wouldn't be Mm. for this life that I'm living, that my goals wouldn't just be for this world, Mm -hmm. but that they would actually be kingdom goals. And suddenly it's not about my own glory or my own personal gain, but it's, Mm -hmm. How can I give him glory? How can I make him excited and happy? And how can I show other people what it looks like to now live free from this burden of trying to do things for your own Mm self-worth and your own self-identity? Yeah, and there is a freedom in that, right? I'm glad that you really, you closed with that thought because when you like submit that to God, there's freedom in knowing 
yeah, I can, we can create these plans. Right. Yeah. But God's got something. Like yeah. the best plan, you get a mastermind together, let's draft up the best plan. We can. It's still less than what God wants to do yeah. right. in our lives. So I love that. There's freedom in knowing, like, man, man, God's got this. Yeah. 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 And I think what's so beautiful is that God uniquely places different talents and gifts into each one of us. And so yeah. you can, mm-hmm. that you love to learn and you love to educate yourself. Like it's to give glory to God, but also to teach others right. and mm-hmm. to use those strengths that he placed inside of you to use for other people, f- for you to be able to elevate other people and call out their own calling into right. their lives. So I think Good. that paints a really beautiful picture of what selfless ambition looks Good. like. It's not focusing mm-hmm. on yourself and your right. own desires, but how your desires that God placed within you, because it's not wrong to have desires or passions, but mm-hmm. how you can use those things to bring people with you along the journey. Right. Good. Uh, and that leads us yeah. right into our second question. And it says, describe a time when you were blinded by ambition where did it lead you and how did you turn back to what god had called you to oh man that's that's a it's a it's a really deep question there right (laughs) i think it's funny whenever i try to think of these times like recall a time when you didn't see god or recall time for some reason like i always go back to like the days before i was saved and i think what I started to realize more is like, hey, I don't have to look that far back to see where I've, you know, sometimes messed up. Yeah. See sometimes where I slip. Yeah, and I good. think that's good. The first thing I thought about answering this question, it's funny, is was going into Bible college, going into a, a place where you would think my environment and my circumstance, my situation would maybe tell me more about Jesus, tell me more about the vision he has for my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But really it kind of blinded me because mm-hmm. um, of the ambitions I thought or the competitiveness that quickly turned into selfishness. Wow. Um, And it's funny because the thing about being blinded is that you don't see or feel the blessings (laughs) that are happening right in front of you. You forget the moves of God that are quickly um, happening every single day. And so for me, I remember being in a situation where God was moving in an incredible way. Um, it was evident, right? Being a part of VU College actually is such an amazing blessing. Um, But you can quickly miss those kind of things in your life Mm -hmm. when you're blinded by your own, maybe greed, maybe you're blinded by your own satisfaction or you want that job title. You want to be recognized in this way. Mm -hmm. You might be recognized as much or I'm doing more than this person and they're getting all the acknowledgement. So good. But we don't realize that it's, it's in those moments that God's trying to teach us something. Yeah. It's in those moments that God's trying to work through us to be like, hey, it's not about you. Mm-hmm. You, didn't go to, so good. you didn't go to Bible college. You didn't serve at VU Church. You didn't go to the growth track to end up it being about you. Yeah, it's so good. You didn't go to a VU That's group because so it's all about you. Yeah. you. You went to those kind of things, those, mm-hmm. those reasons for community because it's to glorify me. It's, it's, so good. it's to glorify Jesus. And, right. and it's, you know, I think we're all going to go through periods in our time where we're, you know, have to go back to that mindset, of course. That, that perspective shift and not realize that, hey, where I'm thinking right now, where my mindset is at this moment, it's not helping me, right? It's destructive. Yeah. 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 I need to quickly yeah. have a paradigm shift and realize, hey, I don't need to every situation I'm in. It's not about what could I get? What could I get? Yeah. What could mm-hmm. I get? Mm-hmm. And it's really counterculture because yeah. you think about it right now yeah. in our society, um, you know, you have these people on Instagram and it's all good things to an extent, but some of it is like, Hey, go get yours. Like do what you got to do to get to the top. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do what you got to do to, so you know, beat the competition. And right. I think it's awesome to, to want to be the best version of yourself, but that really you get to have the right mindset and perspective saying, I want to be the best version of myself because that version of me yeah. helps me glorify God better. Yeah. 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 Helps, yeah. helps me really spread good. the message of Jesus to, to more people, helps me be a light in the world to more yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. If the best version of you doesn't do that, yeah that's not the best version of you, right? And so, and I think there's gonna be moments in my life where I'm gonna have to rethink this again. I'm sure Mm -hmm. there's gonna be moments and situations in my life where I'm gonna be like, oh goodness, I'm, I'm being selfish again. Or, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm think, I don't think it's something I'm going to grow out of ever, right? Yeah. Even as I mature and get older, I'm going to have new situations, new opportunities yeah. where I'm going to have to fight that instinct of me, 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 me. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's exactly what we were talking about in this last question, really the whole theme, right, of this crew is about changing really our perspective of who Jesus is and what he wants for us and what the Bible says he is and what the Bible wants for us. And it's clear. It's so clear in the Bible, but yet we can miss it in our day-to-day lives. We just don't get that reminder in us. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. that's really really good, Justin, because I think so many people can relate 
to that truth. Yeah. Right? And I, I don't think any one of us uh, are, 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 can come out unscathed from what you've just shared, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's a constant check that we need to have on ourselves, right? Like, mm-hmm. it is not about, you think about the purpose-driven life, one of the most sold books on the face of the planet. Right. Yeah. The first thing is, the first bar in this book is, it's not about you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Look for a purpose-driven life. Hey, it's not about you. And yeah. I think when we have a selfish ambition, I think it's right. What about me? Like, I, I'm going to get offended now. Yeah. I'm not going to celebrate people. Right. I'm not going to have mm-hmm. gratitude, yeah. right? I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at everything I don't have versus everything that I do have. Yeah. 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 Right. And you good, think about good. from the heart that we ought to be living from and operating from, we should be operating and moving from a place of peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've got everything I need because I got Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Right. But when you go, when you operate from that space, you're operating from a space of like pride, you're from a space of like, I need to get, I need to gain. What can I like? It's, it's, it's so, it's so reversed. Right. But yeah. yeah. I think we are most drawn to the people that move from a place of peace. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Do you think oh, about yeah. the people that you value in your life? Man, they're givers. Yeah. They're, they're, they're people that are grateful people. Mm-hmm. They're people that walk in a space of joy. Right. It's great. Selfless ambition removes all those things. Right. 100%. You can't enjoy peace. You can't enjoy joy. Yeah. You're never, you're never going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. There's always going to be you. I remember I got to a place in my life where I reached all the goals that I had created for myself when yeah. I was like 17 or 18. I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh. You did it. Like I had to redream. I had to dream again. Yeah. I had to create, create new goals. But that's what happens when you have selfish <laughs> ambition. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh, I need more. I need more. I need more. I need more. Yeah, but yeah, when you yeah, move from a place yeah. of peace, like I'm okay here. Yeah. Oh, but, oh, God, you brought me here. I'm great yeah. here too. Yeah. Oh, God, you brought me here. I love this yeah. too. God, thank yeah. you so much, right? Yeah. And uh, so I think people feel that around you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sharing. yeah. That was so There's good. Re- oh. Go ahead. Sure. Go. <laughs> I, I love what you're talking about, you know, <laughs> dreaming again. Because when I hear this question, I know it, it, I relate to it, it hit me hard last year. Um, because I had a strong, and Kat was talking about identity with my career path. Mm. I and mean, I had gone to school, I had gone to grad school, and I'm here working in this industry. I'm, you know, trying to network and yeah. develop yeah. and grow. I'm like, I'm going on this career path, and then things really changed, right? Yeah. And um, really sat down, and w- what the Lord really spoke to me was that, hey, Sean, I, I, I want you to see your identity in me and mm. not just this blessing that I've given to mm. you. Beautiful. Because even what something I even uh, was able to identify was I got onto that career path by God. Yeah. Right. Like I tried to do things Good. my own way and it didn't work. Yeah. And I went to God and then it started working. And so when I, when, when it went away, I was like, wait, hold on God. Like, I thought this was what you got for me. I thought this is what we were doing. I thought this is how we're going to be rolling. Right. But then the Lord really got to me. He's like, Hey, listen, like what I have for you is more than just this. Mm-hmm. Right. Good. Don't subconsciously or consciously overvalue this one little yeah. blessing that I've put inside of your life. There's more that I'm going to create in you. There's yeah. more I'm going to develop you for yeah. and, and be content in the new things. And then now he's giving me new ambitions, mm. new dreams, uh, new revelation and what he's really doing throughout my life. And so um, really just having a new perspective and being open to me changing and the Lord developing right. me in ways that he has for me to be the ultimate, you know, me of what he has. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's so great. Yeah. It's great. Well, I think uh, all of these answers have been really great. I think we've had some really great conversations so far, but I want to keep it rolling. So we're going to move on to point number two. On. And so if you guys are following along with us, uh, you can go to vuchurch.com forward slash crew. And there's actually this handout. It has all these uh, points, all these questions that we're actually going over. So that way you can follow along with the conversations. But it says here, get back what you lost. Mm. And it says, Bartimaeus is a blind man along the road who cries out for healing as Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. But Jesus doesn't assume what Bartimaeus wants, but is a personal God who asks, what do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus could see the path of Jesus better than the disciples who had never lost their physical eyes. He doesn't have eyesight, but he has insight. Mm. And, uh, and here are like the three points that it, it follows up with. And, and I'm going to touch on some of these, but it says Bartimaeus asked for sight while the disciples asked to be seen. Mm. And a lot of times, like I, I relate to this so hard because for me, it's like, I, I know I can, I've, I've had moments in my life where I'm like, Oh man, I look at so, what someone else is doing. It's like, I want that. You know, yeah. I want, I want that influence. I yeah. want, I want that position. I want, I want to be where they're at. And what does it do? It, it, it sometimes it takes away kind of what you were talking about earlier. It takes away my peace. Yeah. I'll be all, all of a sudden become discontent with where I'm at. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm supposed to be functioning out of this place of like this peace where I want to be selfless. I want to be giving more. But all of a sudden, I'm not able to celebrate people. All of a sudden, I'm I'm not able to celebrate other people's wins, you know. And it really, it's it's this thing where it's like I actually have to... I have to shift my perspective and going into point two, it says we're not here to ask God to change our position, but to change our person. Mm. It's something that happens from the inside out. It says Jesus restores by giving us back what has been lost. And it says, God, I don't want to be elevated. I want to be restored. Mm. And I think that's a radical prayer to yeah, pray yeah. because it's something where it's like, we got to do some heart work when we pray that, right? Yeah, yeah. We got we to gotta look at all these things and, and really evaluate everything that I want, right? Again, it's not wrong to have these desires, these wants, just like you said before. But there is this radical idea of shifting the perspective, like rather than what I want, do the things that I want really, do they, do they come from a place where it really just shifts the focus on someone other than myself? Mm-hmm. Does it shift it onto Jesus? Yeah, Does it good. shift it onto the people around me? And so it leads us to the second question. It says, how would you respond if Jesus asked you the question, what do you want me to do for you? Oof. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's, it's a solid question. Yeah. I'm, and I'm gonna I'm go ahead and jump in first because for me, like if, if Jesus were to ask me this, I, I genuinely, I have no idea what I would ask. Yeah, right. I think a lot of times I think I know what I need or what I, I, or what I want. I confuse those two so yeah. easily. Yeah. And so oftentimes, like even in my decision-making process, I may, I may ask for something, yeah. I get this thing and it wasn't necessarily the thing right. that I needed. Mm. Right. It, right. it may right. have led right. me to a place where it caused me to lose my peace. It caused me to lose even a part of myself that I thought like, God, like this is how you made me. Like, am I compromising even on my character? Ooh, yeah. You know? And I think that's, that's a huge thing to yeah. really just evaluate. So if like, it, as I think about this, I think for me, I have to constantly remind myself and ask like, okay, rather than like, God, what do I want from you? It's like, God, what can I do for you? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What I'm doing every single day, how can I honor you more? Yeah. How can I honor the people around me more? How can I serve the people around me more? When I walk into a room, what do people feel? Yeah. You know, like, do they feel like they're going to be uplifted? Not just because of the fact because I'm, I'm a good person yeah. or I'm yeah. great or whatever. But it's because it's something that I carry. There's this humility about it. Yeah. Walking in this thing, this yeah. attitude of servanthood. Yeah. It's great. And, uh, and that's just really what I think about when I think about this first question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it. I, it's such a great answer. And I think for me, that question was posed from Jesus. At first, I would say abs. Yeah. I think I'd walk with that and like, maybe like seven feet tall. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's funny because I think sometimes we could, our question, our answers could sway based off what our foundation is. Because yeah. the truth is, if, if our foundation is me, 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 it would be those kind of, those shallow things. Mm-hmm. If, if Jesus, you're telling me the guy who can do miracles, right? Change water to wine, raise people from the dead. He can make, he can do anything for me. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so if, if I'm in a season of life where I'm, I'm not focusing on God, I'm focusing on myself then my answers are going to be shallow. Yeah. I'm going to have, uh, hey, I want that job promotion. Good. Yeah. Hey, I, I, want, I want that person to recognize me or, hey, I want that car, right? Mm-hmm. And you start getting into this maybe materialism or, or things that aren't necessarily going to bring you closer to God. Not necessarily bad things, but things that are not going to fulfill you. You yeah. know, Danny was talking about like, oh, it's, you got that thing and you necessarily don't even want it. For me, it's like, sometimes I get that thing and I'm like, this is not what I expected that thing to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like, Good. hey, I want it to be in this place. Oh, this place is, I want to be, I wanted this job. This job is hard. <laughs> I don't know if I, yeah. oh man, yeah. oh, I wanted to be part of Voo Church. Oh, Loden's early in the morning. Yeah. Mm. Like, yeah. oh, I, I, I wanted to be on the parking team. Oh, it started raining. I don't, <laughs> God, I don't want this so anymore, true. you know? So true. So it's like, we're asking stuff for, for from God that necessarily that we don't understand the ramifications yeah. sometimes. And yeah. so, yeah. For me, it's going back to this idea of foundation. If my foundation is all about God, and my foundation is recognizing the things that should be the most important in my life, my family, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, my, my relationship with my friends, my relationship with God, the, que- the answer to my questions are gonna be, hey, I want my family to be a healthy God. If you yeah. can, I, w- I wanna get closer to you. Yeah. I wanna see you better, right? Yeah, Talking about yeah, sight. Yeah, yeah. God, I, I wanna see you in a new way every yeah, yeah, single yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If my foundation is right, I think my answers to the question are finally going to be so right. Good. Yeah. That's great, I Justin. Agree and I think the reality is that all battles come from a person's heart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have conflicts because our hearts are conflicted. And mm-hmm. so our only hope to find peace is when we shift the posture of our heart to a place, how you were saying, Justin, you fix your foundation. And mm-hmm. when our hearts are in a posture of glorifying God and thinking about other people and not yeah. putting the focus on ourselves. Yeah. I read this quote uh, by Timothy Keller and he mm. says, uh, 
humility is not thinking of yourself as less it's simply thinking of yourself less yes. mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and so I Beautiful. think my answer to that question if Jesus were in front of me and he'd ask me what do you want I think I'd simply say renew my heart mm-hmm. purify my heart mm-hmm. transform me from the inside because yeah. all of our thing, all moments all interactions all conversations stem from the heart and so if our hearts are healthy and filled with the spirit with the fruit of the spirit with patience kindness peace love then all of our interactions will flow from that place and our lives will be a picture of what it looks like to paint with that with the fruit of the spirit so Mm. i think that would be the answer for me it's beautiful i actually i I was literally going to say some of the things that you said because (laughs) i've been reading this book called dangerous prayers and it definitely talks a lot about the very first chapter of it is a prayer from David Mm. where he prays, search my heart Mm -hmm. and know my ways, transform me, like you're saying, from the inside out. And so um, it definitely, it does stem from the heart. I think if Jesus asked me that question, I hope that that would be my same answer. Search Mm -hmm. my heart, even though that's a really tough thing to say and to ask for because it brings up pain. It brings up places that maybe you're not willing and ready to confront. But I love that when it's Jesus asking, you know that he's going to answer in a way that's gentle. He's going to confront and bring up the things in your heart in a way that's convicting, but that's also transforming and renewing. And my prayer is that I would be made more like him every single day because I'm so aware of the fact that I'm so far from that right now. And that sanctification is a process of becoming more and more like him. That's right. I'm grateful um, for a God who's committed to that process with me Amen. and who's committed to doing it in a way that's gentle, mm-hmm. that's convicting, yeah. mm-hmm. right. and that's truly what's best for me, but then also that invites me to be a part of what he's doing in our yeah. world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I absolutely. I yeah. co-sign on, on, on so much of all that's said. Mm-hmm. Um, yesterday I was reading Psalm 36 and it really got to me because it, it dove through. It kind of starts off with, it's a Psalm of David and it starts off where um, it's saying, don't, don't be too full of yourself. Right. Don't yeah. be so flattered that you are deceived by your own sin. Wow. Know that you're missing the mark in certain areas. And then it goes on to talk about how God's His uh, love and, and faithfulness and justice is so yeah. massive, right? Uh, and what really gets to me or what, um, what was getting to me is making sure that throughout reading this book of Mark is that being able to discern my heart. Yeah. That's what Jesus right. did over and over and over. He, he was discerning the hearts of the disciples, yeah. Yeah. of those that he was giving, um, providing the miracles to. And, and I'm thinking that's kind of going to be my ask. Is like, God, like, I want to be able to discern my heart. Yeah, right? yeah. Show me, tell me yeah. where my heart is. How is it being postured so that I can know then how I can go out and, and love others? Because yeah. when I first heard this question, I'm like, man, what? what would I ask for? Do I ask to, to be more peaceful, to yeah, to, to, yeah. to be more generous, yeah. to be all these good yeah. things and right. great characteristics, right? But I, I really think it's like, hey, if, if we're transformed from the inside and know where our heart is, yeah. we're going to know how we can love others um, unconditionally and just be with Christ more and, and understanding those elements, how we can be able to yeah. operate That's in great. that Christ-like. That's great, Sean. I love that everyone's heart here is like, man, I want to be more like Jesus. Yeah. 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 And I, I have to agree. I, I don't know, similar to you, Danny, I don't know how I would respond if Jesus was right in front of me. What do you want me to do? If you, I think I would just cry like a little baby. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever you want, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I think, though, I, I would like to say that I would say the same thing. Man, I, can, I, can I just know you more? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Please. Mm-hmm. Help me to know your, like, let me know your love more. Help me know your grace more. I think if wow. we really believe that what we believe is really real, I mean, it's going to change the way we live. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? mm-hmm. so I never want to be in a space where I just want to always just be like overwhelmed by love. I want to be overwhelmed by grace. Yeah. But let's jump into the summary. Godly change occurs when we allow Jesus's selflessness, uh, compassion, and love to saturate our hearts. This requires taking off the blinders and being sensitive to God's plan for our lives, as opposed to submitting to our own motivations. Consistently being honest and sincere with God about our needs invites his restorative power into our lives and removes our selfish ambitions. He'll see to it that things are accomplished and that you're equipped to, the, to, the, to last the journey. I love that. And Kat, why don't you take us through a call to action? We never 
finish a crew without some soul work. Come on. I love that. Why don't you hook, our, hook, hook us up with some soul work? Yes, this is our call to action for this week. It says, pinpoint the areas in your life that need change and then speak this sincere prayer. Jesus, I want to be more like you. Mm. Help me do whatever you wow. ask. Wow, strong. Um, wow, that's, that's good. That's our call yeah. to action for this week that we would take yeah. time individually. I love yeah. when we get mm-hmm. to come together and really have conversations like this. They sharpen us, they yeah. make us mm-hmm. um, see things with a new perspective, but then it's important that we go from here and spend time alone, privately uh, with yeah. Jesus and actually invite him to search our hearts come on. and to make us more like him. And so let's just pray. Let's never close a crew session without coming together Amen. in prayer, yeah. but let's make that our prayer for all of us today that we would invite Jesus to just guide yeah. us, lead us, and to transform us from the inside out. Will you pray with so us? Good. Lord God, we thank you so much for this moment that we have to come before you. We thank you for the honor that it is to be called your children, to get to walk with you, to get to know you better every single day. We come before you and we seek you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We invite you, Jesus, to speak to our hearts this week. Show us the areas in our lives where we haven't fully surrendered over to you, where we might be seeing things through our own perspective and where you're gently convicting us to see things the way that you see them, God. We want to be made more and more like you, Jesus. And so we just invite you to have your way in our lives. We love you. We thank you in advance for what you're doing and we trust you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Guys, thank you so much for being here. I can't tell you how much I value you guys making time to be here and and making Jesus a priority uh, in your life. Guys, thank you for being here as well. We're so happy that you joined us. We'll see you next week on Crew Live. Peace. Love you guys. Hey, Rich Wilkerson here. I want to say a big thank you for watching today's content, believing and trusting that it impacted you. And if it did help you or it encouraged in any way, I would love for you to like it and share it with some other people. Make sure to subscribe to the VU Church YouTube page where you can get more content just like this. And while you're there, go peruse the gallery, as they say, and see past talks and past content that I believe is gonna help you. I love you. Best is yet to come.